Hey guys, how you all doing? Rahul here. Hope you had a great Christmas, got all the things you wanted. Maybe you got yourself that PC you've been looking for, maybe the new graphics card, I don't know. But if you come to this video, you might have got new things which allow you to record. So you want to know the best ways to record. So today I'm going to be going over my DX Tory settings, um, which is the program I use to record. But before we start off with this, I just want to let you know that if you do have an Nvidia card, I would recommend going for Shadowplay over DX Tory. Shadowplay doesn't drop your frames pretty much at all, whereas DX Tory does when you're recording, and also the quality with the Shadow Play is still quite high when you compare it with DX Tory, so there is no real need to use DX Tory if you do have an Nvidia card and can use Shadow Play. But if you do have to use DX Tory, you can follow the settings I use to try and get the best quality for yourself. So to start off, we can start off with this overlay settings. Here is just basically what you're going to be seeing on screen when you're recording. So you've got your non recording color and your recording color. This just helps um, in the corner to make sure you know what you're doing and um, whether it's recording or not. I have green for not recording, orange for recording. This is all personal preference so you can choose what you want. Next up we've got the folder options. Here these are really really vital that you have a good hard drive to record to. To get good decent 1080p 60fps footage I would recommend you have a hard drive with a write speed which is over 150 megabytes a second. If you got anything higher than that then you'll be fine. You can probably even try and record at high um, resolutions or higher frame rates but 1080p 60fps is kind of like the sweet spot at the moment I found. So you can look into your hard drive see which ones you want to record to as you can see here I have five hard drives I can use. I've got my C drive, my D drive, my E drive, my F drive and then the R drive. My C, E and R drives are all SSDs and the D and the F um, are HDDs. So I want to record to an SSD as they have the farder, faster read and write speeds so I went out and bought myself this hard drive which is purely just for recording so I'm going to only be recording to this hard drive and um, all my other hard drives I won't record to. So what you can do is in DX Story just click the little add folder button and find your hard drive. So we can go over and we've seen we've got our, our hard drive here we can click OK or if you have a specific folder you want to um, look into to record to you can go to that one and then we can do a write speed to see how fast we will be writing to it as I'm already recording this video to the hard drive if I were to do a write speed right now this number would drop however I can show you what it looks like say if I were to record to my C drive I could just do a little benchmark and click the run button it would do the little test to see how um, the write speed here we go 309 megabytes a second my C drive is my quickest drive on my PC however I don't want to record to it as I mainly use that for putting programs and stuff on but as I said I have this R drive to record to so this is the one we're going to be using also you can try and set a folder for your screenshots moving on we have the hotkeys here basically this is just the these are just the buttons you're going to be pressing to start stop your recording take screenshot shots etc etc you can set them up I've only got um, it for start and stop recording and um, taking a screenshot as I don't really use any of the other buttons F8 for recording F11 for taking a screenshot now we can go on to the movie settings this is kind of the juicy area the area where like everything will go into place and you'll get that great quality you want to be getting. Now for the codec, I use the Matrox MPEG-2 iFrame HD codec. I'll leave a link to where you can get this in the description, but when you download it, you'll get all of these and I use this one, which is the HD one, not the HD plus alpha, just the normal HD one. You can cl then click this little pen icon or whatever next to it and see the settings you're going to be using. For the data rate, 250 megabytes a second is a nice one to go with. This is the, um, well, actually it's on 249, I'll try and get it up to 250. Oh, it's really hard, the size is so small that it's hard to get it exact, so I'll just leave it 249, can't get it up to 250, who cares, it's close enough. But, having 250 megabytes a second, this will get you a nice bit rate on your recording, and you'll get that good quality. Also for the frame rate, I record at 60 FPS to get a nice smooth gameplay experience, and this is why we've got it at 60 here. You can copy these settings as well, don't really change these, these are just the default ones, and you don't really want to be changing them. Then for the rest of this page we can have a look, we've got our frame rate which we're going to keep at 60, we want a file output and the file format to be AVI and we want to also include our mouse cursor. This you don't have to do however a lot of the games I play there is the mouse cursor which you can see in the game so I like to include this just for say tutorials um, you will be able to see where my mouse cursor is to see what I'm clicking. You can also try and synchronize your video FP 
FPS. This would mean that if you are recording at 60 FPS, your your frames will be capped at 60. This won't be that great as if you're able to get more frames than 60, then there's no real point in doing this. However, if you're finding there's lots of fluctuations within your game, then you can probably try and cap it at 60 FPS. However, most games have their inbuilt capping system which you can use yourself, so you don't really need to be using this option. For this scaling, this area is really cool. This is what you're going to be recording to the resolution you're going to be recording at. So if you play at 1080p or say you play at 1440p, you can try and downscale your resolution to record at a lower resolution. This will mean that it'll be easier to record. The file size will be smaller, just things like that. So if I were to say record at 50%, I wouldn't be recording at 1080p. I'll be recording at a lower resolution. You can also click this size button and actually change it um, to how you want it so I could change it to, to say 1280 by 720 and my recordings will be at 720p rather than 1080p however I keep it at 100% as I'm able to record at 1080p 60fps. For my audio settings, I've split the audio into three different parts. We've got our number one, number two, and number three. Number one is the main audio, the game audio. Number two is my microphone. And number three is the speakers, which all my friends talk through. Now, the way I've split my audio is through the Astro A50 splitter. I have Astro A50s as my headset. And as there's two imports to the um, kind of box of it, it means that I can split the audio to have gaming coming into one part and then the voice of my friends coming into the other. To do this, if you don't, have say Astros or a physical way to split your audio you can use the virtual audio cables to split your audio. I've made a tutorial on this in the past I'll leave a link to that in the description and probably on screen now if you want to check it out but that's about it for the audio there isn't really much you just want to make sure you've got the correct audio set up normally you can just have the game audio say if you're not even going to do live comms I hardly ever do live comms so really I could just have this number one where it's got the normal audio which I always hear and this would just be the game audio easy for me to record. Next section we've got uh, is the uh, screenshots. These really don't matter that much as I hardly ever take screenshots. You can try and customize this yourself. File format, I like to keep in PNG as I just, that's my favorite file format for images. No reason why, I just like it and um, again we've got the scaling you can change that and just a few other options I normally if I were to take a screenshot would use the um, inbuilt steam one however if you want to use this program to take a screenshot you're more than capable of doing so and then we can move on to our advanced settings you can copy these um, most of these you just want to keep um, unticked for your processing threads though you want to keep it to your threads of your CPU I have eight so I keep it at eight if you're unsure about how many threads you might have then leave your CPU in the description what a um, model it is like if it's like i5 4820k or something I don't know if that's actual CPU my one's the i7 4820k so maybe there's an i5 like that I don't know but if you leave that in the description me or someone else could help you out telling you how many threads you have and everything else here you want to keep unchecked and that is about it for the settings I use in my DX Tori. Hopefully this has helped you out. Remember though, to use DX Tori, you need a pretty good system because it does drop your frames quite a lot. And if you aren't able to get 60 FPS when playing normally, then trying to record at 60 FPS won't be that great. Say if you're normally getting around 70 FPS and maybe sometimes dropping to 60, when you record at 60 FPS, this is going to even drop further, so you won't be fully able to record at 60 FPS. Also, a hard drive is just vital in this when you're recording to a hard drive that hard drive cannot be the same hard drive as the game which you are playing on so if the game is on your d hard drive you don't want to also be recording to your d hard drive as the frame rates just will, will be all choppy and stuff and it isn't the best thing to be doing you want to be recording to a separate hard drive which has high write speeds to get that 1080p 60 fps if you do only want to record at 30 fps then having lower write speeds will be fine but again you don't want to be recording to the same hard drive as your playing the game on. Anyway, that is about it for all I had to say for this video. These were my DX Tori settings. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If there are any other kind of suggestions you want for videos you would like to see me make, then do leave them in the comment section below. I've been Rahul. Catch you on the next one.